Welcome on in, welcome on in, welcome on in, everybody. We are wrapping up part four or breaking down part four of Dave Quinn's Not All Diamonds and Rosé. We are breaking down Flipping the Table, which is the chapter on Real Housewives of New Jersey, which was very juicy um, while I was finishing up the tra- the chapters for today. Because like I said, I had like some family stuff that I was trying to take care of. And then because I'm going on a trip and then I had some friend stuff that I was like, I needed to be a good friend, unlike Teresa and Jacqueline. And then I ended up like stirring up some drama with one of the Jersey housewives because I was like, oh, did you see what they said about you in the book? And then she was like, you know, she was getting it. But yes, we are breaking down part four of Not All Diamonds and Rosé today, the Jersey chapter. Shall we get into it? We will be doing quiz time at the end of this, so make sure you're ready. Thank you for the badge. Who dropped the first badge? Let's see. Who did it? Ansley. Yes, Ansley. Ansley. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Did they just mention you on Vanderpump Rules? Um, I haven't watched Vanderpump Rules yet, but I believe I was told that, yes, I will be mentioned in this week's episode. So if you guys are watching Vanderpump Rules, please... Take a little Instagram story and tag me so I can repost it. Mm. I got my I'm ready to flip a table wine inspired by New Jersey. Shall we break it down? I think everyone's for the most part in the hood. Let's do it. Part four, flipping the table. So the show was originally titled Jersey Girls. Ooh, because they wanted to find women. They can do it all. I'm a bad bitch and I can do it all, baby. So they started with their casting at Chateau Salon, which is where Dina, Jacqueline, and Danielle used to go to get their hair done. And so that's where a lot of the housewife show and shows end up getting cast as they go to like local salons or local hot spots where we know housewives are going to be attend or going to be at. That way we can ask some of them. So one of the the hairstylists there was like, Yeah, you should definitely talk to Dina. She's got it all going on. She's blonde. She's um she's smart. She's got money. Like she's the bomb.com. And so they're like, all right, well, let's give this Gina, this Dina girl a try. So first off, they started with Dina. Um, and Dina and Jacqueline were the ones that kicked it off. And originally, I think they were considering doing um, like a spinoff with them. But it ultimately ended up becoming Jersey Girls, which ended up becoming Real Housewives of New Jersey. So after they brought in Gina, Dina and Jacqueline, sorry, why do I keep saying Gina? Dina and Jacqueline, they kicked off the casting. They started to help the producers find other cast members that they thought that would that they thought would be really good for the show. So they ended up finding Caroline and then De- and then Teresa, and then they brought in Dolores. So we know of Dolores now, but De- Dolores was one of the originals that was supposed to be on Jersey Girl when it first started but ultimately she bowed out and in came Danielle stop and Dolores was originally supposed to be on but I think Jacqueline said that she dipped out because her boyfriend didn't want her to do the show and Dolores says that she bowed out because it just seemed like too much drama and she didn't want to get caught up in the drama she was a former cop she's like I'm not gonna get caught up in the drama Ugh. And so they brought in Danielle Stop, who everyone knew was like a cuckoo bird. And they're like, the, the salon owner was like, Danielle's a little crazy, but she's great TV. And then Jacqueline went into the salon one day and was like, hey, I'm helping them cast this new show. Do you want to do this new show about women that have it all in New Jersey? And do you want to be on TV? And Danielle was like, uh, yeah, I want to be on TV. I deserve to be on TV because I'm a bad bitch. And I'm going to I'm going to end up pulling Margaret Joseph's tail one day, ponytail one day. But apparently Dina and Caroline didn't like Danielle at all. There was originally a uh, a plan for Dina and Jacqueline to take Danielle to lunch to see if she's even like to see how crazy she was because they had heard about her. But they didn't know, like, is she like full on crazy or is she just like, you know, fun, entertaining, crazy. But they didn't want her on the show, Dina and Caroline. And then Caroline ended up finding the book, A Cop Without a Badge. That's the book that was written by Danielle Staub's ex husband or yeah, that he was written. It was written by her ex about you know her being a prostitution whore and being engaged nineteen times and getting arrested and all of that stuff back you know when she was a young lad. And so Caroline found the book and she apparently would parade the book around town and everywhere she went. Caroline would keep the book in her her purse and she'd be like, "Do you know about this book, A Cop Without a Badge? It's about Danielle Staub and we're filming a television show with Danielle Staub." And it was wild. But the women didn't like her. And then 
we they were circulating the book and talking about the book and then Danielle's like why are they talking about this book I had shelved this in my past like a long time ago and why do we have to talk about this again and the women are like because you're crazy and then we had the season one finale and this was the table flipped you prostitution whore you were engaged 19 times that whole moment They all claim, everybody claims that that moment came out of nowhere and that Teresa was such a sweetheart and nobody, they knew that she had like a temper, but they didn't know it was like a table flipping temper. She says that uh, things really blew up because Danielle, she was, she, Teresa claims that things blew up because Danielle was being mean to Dina and she didn't like that she was being mean to Dina. And she says that she had a real problem with Danielle because Danielle hooked up with a young guy at her shore house in front of her daughters. And she didn't like that it was from her daughters. So I was like, okay, wow. I mean, are we really surprised that Danielle hooked up with the guy, with the younger guy in front of Teresa's daughters? Well, it pissed Teresa off enough. And apparently nobody has ever seen this side of Teresa. Everyone's like, we knew she'd get a little crazy, but we didn't know she was going to get like this. She was supposed to be Lucille Ball. Lucille Ball doesn't flip tables, but it was bad. And she flipped the table and she like went crazy on Danielle. What I do love about this part, part four about of the, the Jersey girls is they're all for the most part in it. I don't think there were any Jersey housewives that declined to interview. Dina was in it. Caroline was in it. Jacqueline was in it. Teresa was in it. Danielle was in it. Um, the twins were in it. Amber Marchese's in it. Kathy Wakili's in it. Rosie's in it. Melissa's in it. I think all the Jersey, Jackie, Margaret, Siggy, Dolores, Jennifer, they're all in it, which is great. Very great. Um, okay. So after the table flip, Teresa went home and she was beating herself up and she's like, I shouldn't have done that. I want them to take that out. And she called the producers and she's like, was that good? And they were like, it was great. It's going to be a moment in reality TV history. It's amazing. But the wild part was after the whole table flip, after the whole shebang went down, they all had drinks at the bar. They literally all the, the men were like, hey, Danielle, you look like you took a real beating. And, you know, we saw the sex tape and you did take a real beating and we want to learn more about that. So do you want to come and have a drink with us? And she was like, OK. And they all just pretended like nothing ever happened. And Dina and Caroline were like, what the hell's going on? How can we just pretend that nothing ever happened? And then season two comes along and Danielle was basically on an island like Gilligan, but like without any friends. And so she recruited Kim G and Kim D and everyone was like, Kim G is called Kim G because Kim G was a gangster and she stirred up all the drama and Kim D was another little potster. But they came in to really provide some sort of balance. Oh, is Jacques in the live? Who, why are we tagging Jacques? Is Jacques here? Hi, Jacques. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Why can't Jacques get any hype? Why? What's going on with Jock? You guys are distracting me. They get mad when I get distracted when I'm doing videos. Um, but yeah, Kim G was a gangster and um, Dina wanted out. She's like, I don't want to do another season of this show. This is bullshit. I'm too good for this. And the producers were like, no, Dina, you're a star. You should be on the show. And Dina was like, I ain't got time for this. I want out. I quit. She quit before season two production even began. But Andy Cohen's like, well, sorry, bitch. You're under contract, so you have to come and film. And she's like, fine, I'll film. And he's like, okay, we'll do three scenes. And she's like, okay, fine. I'll film three scenes for you. And they ended up milking those three scenes for a full-on seven episodes. But the producer's like, we really need Dina. We love Dina. She's a true star. They claim that had we actually gotten more of Dina, that Dina would have been a Bethany or a Nini. That Dina would have been the star of New Jersey. And I don't know how true that is. I don't think I believe that. But that's what the producers seem to think. But we know that they don't always make the best decisions. Even Louis Vuitton makes mistakes, darling. Um, then we get to the scene at the country club and this is apparently where the women saw Danielle for the first or where Teresa saw Danielle for the first time and she was waiting for Danielle to get out of the bathroom so that she can confront her at the country club at the Kim at the posh fashion show where Ashley Jacqueline's daughter was walking in the show and that's where there was the fight and one of the producers told Ashley that somebody that Danielle hit her mom so Ashley went outside and she's like you're not gonna hit my mom and then she grabbed her hair and she pulled out her hair 
Apparently what we saw on TV wasn't entirely what happened, though. Andy says that, you know, anytime there are major physical altercations, they do like the flashes and they try to not show physical altercations because they don't want Housewives to be about that. Housewives is a classy show and they don't want it to be about that. And I'm like, mm, have you seen the other? Andy, are you watching these shows? Because they're not that classy. So I don't know if there is if there's any truth to them hiding physical altercations or at least within this specific instance but because they're saying it looked like because Danielle's like it looked like she just pulled my hair a little bit but they didn't show the full truth of what actually happened but then Carlos King who was a producer he was also one of the producers on Atlanta but before he came over to Jersey he says that there was no hair that was actually pulled out that Ashley really did just yank it and that Danielle went and got like a party city wig and like clipped it out in her confessional where she's like look at this is the hair that Ashley pulled out of my head and then Kim G apparently claims that Danielle pulled it out of her own head in the car that Ashley didn't do it that she was in the car when the cameras weren't actually on her and she pulled out her own hair to make it look like Ashley had done that or undid one of her extensions the reunion was heated Andy got pushed Danielle claims that you know, there were 30 to 40 security guards armed there just to protect her and that they had to build an entire safe room for her in case in case any of the women went crazy on her because Teresa was unhinged. But ultimately, she ended up getting fired after the second season. And all of the producers knew that and Andy knew that. And I guess as they were promoting the reunion, they had announced that this would be one of the housewives final scenes or final moments as part of the real housewives of New Jersey. And it was obvious that it was Danielle because none of the other women got along with Danielle and she was on the outs. So Andy was like, that was really bad. And we shouldn't have announced that prematurely because we didn't even have a conversation with her. And we didn't even give her a heads up that that was going to be announced as she got fired. But according to, to Danielle, she's like, I was on fired. I quit. And I quit at the reunion. And I told them at the reunion that I wasn't coming back, that I was done. D-O-N-E, done. And then come in Melissa Gorga and Kathy Wakili, who are Teresa Judice's sister-in-law and her cousin, her first cousin. And Teresa and Danielle both claim that Melissa and Kathy were fame hungry and they were just trying to ruin Teresa's life. And that's why they really came on the show. Danielle says Melissa and Joe were trying to sell stories to TMZ and that they would talk mad trash about Teresa Um and that Melissa was always DMing with Danielle and calling and, and telling her all this smack about Teresa. But Melissa's like, yeah, I had my moments where like I vented, but like I wasn't like trying to take down Teresa. And Danielle was like, nah, bitch, you guys were trying to sell stories to TMZ. And Melissa's like, I don't know her. And Teresa's adamant that Kathy and Melissa came on the show behind her back to take her down. But they're adamant that it wasn't intentional, um, that they really just came on. They were talking to producers. They were interviewing with producers, but they were trying to not tell Teresa anything until there was something that was a little more definitive and official. Dare I say this? I actually side with Teresa hearing everybody's side of this story. I I think if you're going to even take, even if you hear from a producer, even if you get a DM from a producer, a phone call for, from a producer, if cameras show up at your house to do a test taping, you give your family member the heads up, whether you're on good terms with them or not. If it's a possibility, if it's a potential I think the thing to do is to give them a heads up and be like, hey, by the way, just wanted to let you know I was approached by a producer. They're asking me about housewives. I don't know if I'm going to do it. I don't know if I want to do it. I just want to give you a heads up. So I understand where Teresa was upset about this. But there was family tension. And apparently the real reason Teresa and Caroline had a falling out was actually during one of their cast trips that happened when they went to the Dominican Republic and they filmed that cast trip, but this happened off camera. Apparently they all went out for drinks to ha or they went to a club and they were all out having good times in the Dominican. And Teresa opened up a bottle of champagne and she was like, pop, pop, pop. And then she popped it and hit Caroline in the head. And then she was sh uh, spraying champagne all over the place. And she's like, I'm gonna make it rain, make it rain, dollar, dollar bills, yo. And apparently the champagne got all over, not just their group, but it got over the group next to them. And the group next to them did not like that. And they were like, what are you doing? You reality trash. And they're like, what, what's going on? And then Albie and Chris Manzo jumped in and they're like, hold up, wait a minute. Let's like diffuse the situation 
situation. We're all good. It's all good. She's been drinking. She was just trying to be funny. She was just trying to have a good time. You know, joke, ha ha, funny. And they were like, nah, that's not funny. We don't appreciate that. And then they got into this big old brawl and they were fighting. And then like the fight ended up breaking up. And then the next day they all had to be questioned. And then they were like, I it, I don't know if they were like formally arrested, but they were brought into the station for questioning and they had to hang out in like the lobby of the police station. They were not allowed to leave because their passwords had all been seized until the full investigation had gone on. And then Bravo had to send out NBC lawyers to come up and save them. And it was like drama o rama. And I feel like this should have been on the show because this was way more interesting than sprinkle cookies. But LB, Chris Manzo and Joe Judice were all the three men that were in question and they got dragged into all of this mess. So Teresa was there and Caroline was there and Melissa and Joe peaced out. They're like, we're not caught up in this. We're not dragged into this. Peace out. But Caroline's like, I think that these guys knew who we were and they were trying to cause a spectacle and they wanted to cause a scene. But it's also like they're in the Dominican Republic. Is Real Houses of New Jersey that much of a hit in the Dominican Republic to where these men would know who you are and would want to cause a scene with you? Come on. It was wild, though. The story was wild. And eventually, like, after three days of having to be stuck in the Dominican Republic, the Bravo lawyers were able to, like, get them out of there. And then they rushed them out really quickly and they ran them to the airport and, like, threw them on the plane and, like, were like, don't ever come back. And Caroline's like, I will never come back. And then we had season three and season four. Well, this was season three, but we had season three wrap and season four begin and they taped them back to back. There was only like a two week break, whereas normally there's a nine month break in between production from when they wrap the last day on the last season to the first day of taping the next season. Obviously, they taped the reunions in between the show airs in between. But at this point, they were like, no, there's too much drama. There's too much tension. We're going to take a quick two week break and then we're going to roll right into the next season which is exactly what they did. And everybody said that it was a complete nightmare. The cast was like, we were exhausted. We filmed for 23 weeks. The, pr- the crew in production were like, this was awful. The producers were like, this was insane trying to air the show while also trying to tape the show. And the cast was like, we had to watch the show while also taping the show. And it's crazy. Um, and so, yes, this is part of the reason Caroline says that there was a falling out with her and Teresa because Carol, after their fight in the Dominican, she was just like, I'm done with Teresa. I'm over Teresa. I can't like, you know, she does these dumb things and she gets us into trouble and she just continued to escalate the situation and continue to make it worse. And so that's really what happened between Teresa and Caroline, or at least the big kind of crack within their relationship. Then we had the Posh D fashion show where Kim D uh, uh, exposes or the guy Angelo comes up and exposes Melissa as a stripper and Kim D owns up to the whole thing. And she was like, yes, it was a setup. None of the women knew about it. The producers knew about it, but none of the women knew about it. I set the whole thing up. I wasn't going to tell the women because I wanted it to go down on my terms in my way. Like is it is what it is. And after that, Jacqueline and Caroline both wanted out. They're like, we don't want to do this show anymore. We're tired of it. We're sick of this bullshit. They ultimately asked Jacqueline and Caroline to stick around because they were OGs on the show. And Melissa and Kathy weren't OGs. And they wanted them to stick around for at least one more season. So they ended up promising Caroline her own show, which was Manzoed with Children, which I believe lasted for, was it four seasons maybe? Um But Kathy says that Melissa and Teresa were pissed that Caroline got her own show because they each wanted their own show. And I'm like, what is Melissa going to have her own spinoff on about? Like, she literally just came up on here. And Teresa, I'm surprised Teresa never got like a formal spinoff. But then season six came in. And so Jacqueline and Caroline did end up leaving. Caroline got her spinoff. One Big Happy Family. So they had to replace Jacqueline and Caroline. So they ended up bringing in Amber Marchese. And then they brought in the twins, Nicole and Teresa. Nicole and Teresa were awful. And so was Amber. Amber was the worst. And her husband, uh, Jim, Jim, he was awful. So season six comes in. The twins come in. Amber Marchese comes in. Dina Manzo returns for a brief stint. But the season overall was just like a total flop. We obviously had the rumor. We had Victoria Gotti. Like they tried to pull out all the stops to make it great. But it was truly, truly awful. Good night, Ansley. Thanks for joining in. Love you. I hope you had a wonderful birthday. Kisses, my love. Sorry that the live is late tonight. Um, 
But they all have a different story as to why season six didn't work out. They all, the show took a hiatus after that, but they're all like, Andy says that the show needed a breather because they really missed the mark with season six and they needed some time to figure out what their next step was going to be. Melissa kind of said the same thing. She was just like, we needed to like restructure the show because obviously what we did in season six didn't work. And that's when they had to bring back Kathy and bring back. Oh yeah. I forgot Kathy left. Well, she didn't officially leave the show. She left in a full-time capacity, but she like tried to do cameos on the show as well. And she tried to like mend things with Teresa, but Kathy's like, every time I try to mend things with Teresa, she keeps cock blocking me and she doesn't want me to be on the show and it's like so annoying and then um season six came back so season six wrapped up they took the hiatus dina left and ended up moving to california and she actually told andy she's like i want to be on real housewives of beverly hills like now that i'm off real housewives of new jersey i want to go and live this west coast life and i think it would make sense if i went and did beverly hills and i did the first you know wife swap on a different show but ultimately the women were like on private jets and they had this really affluent lifestyle. And Dina was like, okay, like I get it. I am not poor. I definitely have money, but that's not my lifestyle. It's not about the glitz and the glamour and the luxury for me. So maybe that's not the best fit. Teresa says that they held the show for her because this is the season that she ended up having to go to prison in season six. We had to watch all of their legal battles play out. She was ultimately sentenced. She had to go off to prison for about a year, and that's when production was down. So even though Andy and Melissa are saying that season six had to take a hiatus after it wrapped, Teresa's like, the reason it really took a hiatus was be- hiatus was because they were waiting for me, and I'm so grateful, and I love it because I'm the star of the show, and obviously I'm the bomb.com. And then Teresa gets home from prison, and then she fixes her relationship with Joe and Melissa. But she's like, we only did it for our parent, for my parents. And Melissa's like, yeah, we really only ever meant, we only had a good relationship because we wanted to make things nice for the parents. Because when we had the christening and there was the whole big blow up, like that was a hot mess express. And like, we couldn't put our, we couldn't put the no, no, and, and what was it? No, no, and yes, yes. Nona and no, no. Yeah, those are their names. Teresa's parents but Danielle and Kim D are very adamant that Melissa and Teresa hated each other and that they still hate each other and they only play nice for the cameras and one of the producers also kind of echoed that sentiment they're like they realize that like this tension and this drama just isn't working for the show and it's not working for any of the viewers so like we should just put a wrap on it all together And Teresa admits that she doesn't fully trust Melissa. She's like, you know, after what she did to me, which I'm assuming was her coming on the show behind her back. She's like, after what she did to me, I don't trust her. And like, I'm never going to trust her. And I still have some animosity towards her. And it's like, obviously, if anybody's watched Ultimate Girls Trip, then we know that even to this day, Teresa does not like Melissa. So finally, after Teresa comes back from prison, we get into season seven. Jacqueline returns. She brings in Siggy Flicker and Dolores Catania. Dolores, as we know, has made cameos over the past several seasons. She was supposed to be one of the original cast members of season one, but apparently her boyfriend didn't want her to do the show. She was now not tied to her boyfriend, decides to join the show with Siggy. They came in to be some sort of like comic relief to kind of brighten the show because it had gotten so dark. But Siggy was also brought in to be a replacement for Caroline Manzo. They thought that Siggy, being a relationship coach, would have been a really good voice of reason, that she wasn't shy about holding back her opinions, and she could also kind of level people out. So they brought her back with having the role of being the Caroline Manzo. You don't talk about my family. We're thick as thieves. And so they were hoping Siggy would bring that that same sort of energy. But instead of thickest thieves, they ended up giving us, that's all I wanted. And obviously we know that Siggy was just like an overperformer. She claims that that's who she is. And if that is who she is, then that's who she is. But it was a lot. It was definitely a lot. Um, and it did bring the show back to life. I think season seven, just in my own personal opinion, watching the show, season six was like a hot mess, but season seven did bring the show back to life. We saw the Jacqueline and Teresa tension and beef sort of start to get settled and worked out a bit. I'm surprised that we didn't dive into that more in this book. Um, I feel like that was such a big piece of the season four, five and seven drama that I'm surprised that that wasn't heavily covered in the book especially since Jacqueline and Teresa were so close. 
we talk about the fallout between Caroline and Teresa, but at the end of the day, Caroline and Teresa weren't really genuinely true friends. But um, they all kind of drag Jacqueline in the book. They say that she was unwell. They say that Andy says she was a real mess on Twitter and that she was unlikable on Twitter and that she was mentally unstable on Twitter and that she was coming off badly to the other cast members and she was putting them through hell. And she needed to leave the show because her life was so revolved around the show and it was just unhealthy for her and she was becoming toxic. And they all like really dragged Jacqueline. And I was kind of like, "Mm," especially since Jacqueline gave an interview and I'm pretty sure she talked about a lot of this stuff too, but the excerpts of her apparently talking about that didn't end up making the book. So I'm like, okay, so we're just... We're going to allow Teresa, Melissa, and Andy to just paint this picture that Jacqueline was just so unwell, even though she gave an interview for the book, and I'm pretty sure she talked about this too. It was very interesting how that whole piece was addressed in the book. But anyway, Jacqueline left the show. She was out the door. She wasn't going to come back. That was done. That was a wrap. Then they brought in Margaret Josephs, who was a breath of fresh air. Um, I thought she was a lot of fun. She brought this new energy. She brought this hustler sort of vibe. Yes, I agree. I think they did do Jacqueline Rogg. Actually, I have an interview with Jacqueline Larita where she kind of dives into that a lot more. We did an interview a couple of months ago on the podcast, and she kind of talks about a lot of that. And I think a lot of people really liked that interview. So if you check out the interview that I did with Jacqueline Larita a couple months ago, it was great. Uh, Back to Margaret Josephs. Margaret Josephs was a hustler. She brought some new kind of energy and this like youthful freshness that was also kind of fun but she ultimately ended up having beef with Siggy and Siggy's like yeah I knew her before the show but like I wasn't friends with her and they're both like we weren't each other's people we just we didn't get along from day one Margaret says that Siggy Siggy made her life miserable since day one by the end of it all Siggy was ultimately she lost the battle and she got fired she got her you're fired walking papers even though you know she loves Donald Trump so we can give her that that reference you're fired I wonder how Jacqueline's son is. She talks about it in the interview. She gives us an update on on her son. Obviously, we know that was a big part of her storyline was her son that was diagnosed with autism, Nicholas. She does give an, an update on Nicholas. And she says that that was part of the reason she stayed on the show for as long as she did was because she wanted to bring awareness to that issue. Um, Andy says that when it comes to Siggy, that the the viewers ultimately turned on her and she became really toxic. She was just not a pleasure to work with at all, especially when it came to production. So we let go of Siggy and then we brought in Jackie, who actually lived down the street from Siggy. And they liked Jackie because they liked her Jewish background. They liked that she was really ballsy and bold and not afraid to back down. I think that's arguable. But they also loved that she was like a, a cut and dry lawyer and that she had a a real like degree background and she just brought like some I don't know if affluence is the right word but she brought brains and grit to the show with like a real hardcore lawyer career and she initially declined they slid into her Facebook DMs and I'm like why are all these producers sliding into all these women's DMs why is nobody sliding into my DMs all I get are like old men that are like 78 years old from the Midwest. And they just are like, if I lived in California, I would marry you. And I'm like, well, thanks, Arthur. I'm sure that's great that you live in in Minnesota. And if you were in California, you would marry me. I'm sure that is amazing, you know, when you jack off at night. But we bring in Jackie. She was great. Um, she, or she was on the fence, but she ended up calling Siggy cause Siggy lived down the street and she's like, Hey Siggy, should I do this show? And Siggy's like, I only did it to sell books. And ultimately I sold books and now I'm done. Thank you. Next. She said, good luck. Good luck, Jackie. And Jackie was like, all right, I will take your good luck and I'm going to take this opportunity and I'm going to cash in on it. And she did. And then we also brought in Jennifer Aiden who knew Teresa and Dolores and had really strong family values and new culture that they brought to the show. And they're like, we like this, this family values vibe. And we like that she has a culture that's different from the Italian culture that we've seen so heavily in the past. She, you know, obviously has that Persian culture that I think is really, or it, no, it's Turkish. Sorry. I think it's Turkish. Sorry. I misspoke. Please don't cancel me for being racist. That was an honest mistake. Um, I love Jennifer Aiden. She's one of my favorites on the show right now. Anyway, 
she they liked the family values. They liked her affluence. They liked that she was a plastic surgeon's wife. It was very quintessential housewife. So she, interestingly enough, she and Margaret Josephs also both interviewed to come on in season six, which is the season they brought on the twins. And like, I wish they would have brought on Jennifer Aiden and Margaret Josephs in season six, but it ultimately didn't work out for either of them back then. It was also during this time that Teresa was talking about her divorce, but it was interesting that she ended up talking very highly of Joe, where I was kind of like, really, we're going to talk so highly of Joe Judice? Like, is he really that great of a guy to be? Like, I get it. He's the father of her daughters. Um, Obviously, you know, she has a lot of respect for the man that helped raise her daughters, but she is very persistent. She insists that Joe did not cheat. Joe Judice did not cheat on Teresa. And I'm like, okay, girl, like, we're, we're still, we're sticking with that story. Okay, he didn't cheat on you. We got it. Then we have the pony pool. Because obviously we had brought Danielle back because Teresa had been getting close to Danielle. And the producers, when they saw Teresa doing yoga with Danielle on social media, they were like, OMG. I can't believe Danielle Staub is actually talking to Teresa and that they're friends. So obviously they had to get Danielle back into the, the picture. So they bring her back in. She They brought her back in. She had some beef with Dolores. And then, but she ultimately had it had the biggest beef with Margaret Josephs and we have the infamous pony pool any new wines coming out maybe soon brat let's hope in the new year tried to make it happen before the, the year wrapped this year but maybe hopefully soon in 2022 we will have some new wines stay tuned you have to buy the wines currently I'm ready to flip a table you have to buy these if you want more wines guys love you nofilterwine.com um okay so, yes, then we had the pony pool, where, which Teresa was blasted for instigating. But she says that it wasn't her. She blames the shop owner. And she's like, the shop owner did it. He's the one that made it all really happen. He's the one that told Danielle to do it. And I was like, yeah, do it, do it, do it. And then I didn't realize it was caught on camera. And then Melissa was like, well, yeah, that's why she was really upset because production blasted her. And she didn't realize that it was brought on camera. Well, Teresa, I think Teresa's been protected too many times in the past that she thought that she would just get away with it. But ultimately, Danielle got axed again for the second time. They cut her out. They fired her, which the producers say was not as cut and dry or black and white as we may want to believe that it was, that she ultimately put herself on an island. She had isolated herself. She had, you know, really had no relationship with any of the cast members moving forward. But Teresa's like, the real reason she was fired because of loyalty, the godfather, she keeps talking about the Godfather and how the Godfather is all about loyalty and blood is thicker than than water and how Melissa has never seen the Godfather. And can you believe that? Maybe she should watch it. She kept saying that. Maybe she should watch it. But anyway, she says that it, it really comes down to a matter of loyalty. And Danielle was not loyal to her. And that's why Danielle's really not on the show. It was very gangster of her. She's like, maybe if she was loyal to me, she would still be on the show. And she's like, you know who she should have gone after? Melissa. Because Melissa was dragging her in season three. So she should have gone after Melissa and not gone after me. And then maybe she would still be on the show. And I'm like, okay, Teresa. Okay. But ultimately... The, tra- the part four closes but with Teresa saying that she's not as dumb as people think that she is. I know that she knows that she plays that up, but she's not as dumb as people think that she is. And I was like, okay, girl. Because Ramona thought you were the scarecrow. Just saying. All right, shall we do quiz time? We have 10 questions tonight. Or what were your thoughts, thoughts, feelings, vibes? If there was a comment that you made that I missed, now is your chance to weigh in on Real Housewives of New Jersey. Thank you, La Holly 2, La Hale, three badges. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Is it LA Hale, La Holly? I'm going to say it's La Holly 2. Thank you for the three badges, my love. I appreciate you. Smooches. Haters are going to hate, 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 but I just love, love, love. Thanks, guys. I want someone that comes in full force. You do? Who do you want? Hi, Suki. I don't remember the twins. Nobody remembers the twins. Nobody wants to remember the twins. If you don't remember the twins, that's a good thing. I'm still cackling up at No No and Yes Yes. Well, I forgot No No his name. It was Nona. Nona and No No. L.A. Hale. Is it L.A. Haley? L.A. Hale. 
Oh, L.A. hail. Like when Erica said it was snowing in Pasadena, but it was really hail. And it was L.A. hail. Got it. Got it. No, no, and yes, yes. Okay. Well, if we are ready, Teresa, I skipped going to blow a casket. <laughs> um, I was saying because everyone sucks up to Teresa. Yeah, everyone does suck up to Teresa. And they, well, clearly they get fired if they don't, as in the case with Danielle. All right, Team Melissa or Teresa? Ooh, good question. Um, I'm going to go with Teresa because I actually think that Teresa is the smarter one of the two of them. And I think Melissa is just playing the game to stay on the show. So Teresa is the real asset of the two of them. And I think Teresa can carry the show moving forward. I think it's easy to be like, I'm Team Melissa because Teresa's awful. But at the end of the day, like... We know Teresa's awful, but I think Melissa, I don't know. I don't think Melissa's all that. I like Melissa. I think on a personal level, I would probably enjoy Melissa more than Teresa. But in this case, I'm going to say I'm team Teresa. I don't know if I would say Teresa. Well, yeah, Teresa is genuinely herself and she's genuinely a scarecrow. What do you think about Margaret? I love Margaret. I love the Marge. The Marge's book was pretty good, too. All right. Are we ready? What final thoughts about part four of the... The Jersey section. Any final thoughts before we wrap up? Not all diamonds and rosé all day. Also, there's not going to be book club next Tuesday. It'll be a different day. I know we always go live every Tuesday, um, but being that next week is the holiday, is Thanksgiving week, and I'm going to be out of town, we're not going to do any lives next week. We'll probably do one. The Thursday night live will probably end up moving to maybe Friday night or Saturday night. I'll let you guys vote. But next week's Thursday night live will be moved to either Friday or Saturday, and then we're probably just going to skip book book club next week and just pick up the week after what surprised you most or what was the juiciest part of the book altogether or of this part four i'll i'll talk about this part four i would say the big brawl that they had in the dominican republic only because we'd never heard of their dominican republic brawl team dina or team caroline um i think i'm gonna go with team dina i think caroline allowed the fame to get to her head as much as she doesn't want to say or admit that I think it really did get to her head. Thank you so much, Suki. Suki D2018. Thank you for the three badges, my love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Quiz time. We have 10 questions tonight. Are you guys ready? I hope you are taking notes. I hope you are R E A D Y. Let's get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. And, and throw them hips, girl. Okay. Question numero uno. What was the original title of The Real Housewives of New Jersey? What was the original title of The Housewives of New Jersey? What was the original title for The Real Housewives of New Jersey? That's right. Tina Marie got it. Question number one goes to Tina Marie. Tina Marie Bells. Let's get it, Tina. She said it was Jersey Girls, and that is correct. Tina Marie gets the first point. Dun, dun, dun. Ah, boom, boom, boom. Ah, boom, boom, boom. Ah. Um, question number two. Who was the first person cast on Jersey Girls? Who was the first person that they cast? They also said that this person had the, the most star quality. Surprisingly. Who was the first housewife cast Dina, that's right. Jay Jana loves you. Jay Jana loves you. It was Dina. That is correct, Amundo. Question number three. What was the name of the book about Danielle's life? The one that Caroline would go parading around. And she was like, did you know about this book? What was the name of the book? Dun, dun, dun. It was not the book was not named Chateau. No, the name of the book, guys, not the salon, 
Cop without a badge. That is correct. Chateau Salon was the salon that they all would go to, and that's where they were ultimately cast. But what was the name of the book? And the book was called Cop Without a Badge. That is correct. And the first person to clock in that answer was Sam Benjamin. Ooh, we've got some some heat going. We have Tina Marie, J. Jana Loves You, and Sam Benjamin all coming in with the point. Cop. Uh, cop is not the correct answer. Cop without a badge is the correct answer. Sorry, Suki. Um, okay, question number four. Who was brought in to replace Danielle Staub? When Danielle exited, who was brought in to replace her? There were two housewives. Who were they? I know, you got to sit next to Tina. Tina's got all the answers. Who were the two housewives brought in? Who were they? Come on, this is an easy one, guys. How are we not on this? How is Tina Marie not answered our five minutes ago? Nope. Nope, it was not Kim G or Kim D. It was not Margaret. It wasn't Nicole or Teresa. It wasn't Kim D or Kim G. Who was brought in to replace Danielle? Kim D and Kim G were brought in to help, like to be allies in season two. Who was brought in to replace Danielle in season three? Guys, this is so easy. Danielle Staub was replaced by who? Season three, guys. Not Siggy, not Margaret. Did I say Siggy and Margaret somewhere? Everyone's saying Siggy and Margaret. It was not Siggy. It was Kathy and Melissa. There we go. Kathy and Melissa. Yes. Asto. As told by tons. As told by tons. Tons. Guys, that was such an easy one. How did so many people miss that one? After Danielle left in season two, who was brought in? Kathy and Melissa in season three. And that's when Teresa's like, they betrayed me, my family. Yeah, duh. Yeah, Shell. Shells. Shell Bells. It was not. Everyone was saying Siggy and and Dolores. Who did Sig- Siggy and Dolores or Siggy and Margaret. Well, Siggy and Dolores and even Margaret replaced Jacqueline and Caroline. They came later. They replaced Jacqueline and Caroline when they left. But yeah, y'all were like a few seasons late. Too much no filter wine. I love it, Stacy. Which one are you drinking tonight, Stacy? I'm drinking, I'm ready to flip a table inspired by Real Housewives of New Jersey, nofilterwine.com. Okay, question number five. Wow, I was very shocked by the answers from the last question, you guys. I was very disappointed. Um, <laughs> you must be drinking lots of... Okay, on the same train of thought, Suki, I'm drinking my wine. Which wine are you guys drinking? Too much wine. Everyone's having too much wine tonight. I love it. Um, I, I know it's because I was 30 minutes late to the live today. Because you guys were all waiting for me drinking. Um, okay, question number five. Same train of thought, same seasons. I'm going to be dropping hints. Which two seasons of Jersey were filmed back to back? Which two seasons of Jersey were filmed back to back? There were two seasons. They were filmed immediately after. They only had a two-week break. Normally, they have a nine-month break. These two seasons only had a two-week break. Which two seasons were there? Remember, we're still thinking of like when Danielle left. Two and three. Nope, it's not two and three. It is not six and seven. Six and seven had like a, a year-long break. Um, three and four is correct. Suki, you got it. Wow, Suki, you said you were drinking and you still got it. Wow, we have no winners. We have not one person in the lead right now. We have Tina Marie with one point, Jay Jana with one point, Sam with one point, as told by Tons with one point, and Suki with one point. It was not five and six. It was not four and five. It was three and four. Three and four. Are we bad class night? Yes, you are bad in class night. You guys have been talking in the back. Yes, I'm drunk and I got a point. That's right, Suki. That's how we do. That is how we get it, get it, get it. And no winners as of yet. Well, I mean, to be fair, everybody's won one point. Nobody's in the lead as of yet. We are on fire. Yeah, you, I mean, you you are on fire, and we need to put the fire out so that you can focus. 
This girl is on fire. Okay, question number six. Which housewife refused? Actually, I don't think we covered this. I think I may have skipped over this this question. Maybe we'll make we'll ask it anyway. Which housewife refused to appear at the season three reunion? Let's see what true Jersey fans are out there. Which season three? Which housewife refused to film or refused to appear at the season three reunion? Remember, Dina left in season two. Dina left in season two. We're talking about season three. Danielle left in season two. Danielle and Dina both left in season two. We're talking Jacqueline. That's correct. Wow. Stacy is a true Jersey fan. That was a bonus point because I feel like some of you guys needed some help. Um, and I forgot that I skipped over that piece in the book in my notes. But a true Jersey fan would know that. And the correct answer was Jacqueline. Teresa didn't skip any of the reunions. It was Jacqueline. It was Jack. You have to decipher, though. You can't say Jackie or Jack. You have to say Jacqueline because Jackie is now a new addition. So now. Okay. The correct answer was Jacqueline Larita from season three. She didn't appear at the season three reunion because they were in the midst of filming season four, and it was a hot mess. Question number seven. Who was cast to be the new Caroline Manzo? They were the new. They were brought in to be the new voice of reason. Which housewife was this? Who was brought in to be the new Caroline? Question number seven. We did cover this one. Siggy, that's right, my boy Ollie. Wow. Guys, we have nobody in the lead right now. Everybody has gotten one point. We have Tina Marie with one point, Jay Jana with one point, Sam Benjamin with one point, As Told by Tons with one point, Suki with one point, Stacy with one point, and my boy Ollie with one point. These last three questions are going to be major. These are the last three questions, and somebody's going to have to take the lead at some point. Ow. Son of a bitch. Uh, sorry, my tailbone still hurts. Um, okay, question number eight. Let's go back to the Dominican Republic. Question number eight. Do the housewives get bonuses if they do reunions? Yes, they. I believe they do get a bonus if they do a reunion. Sorry, that wasn't a question. My boy Ollie, first book club point. Yes, my boy Ollie, I love it. Okay, question number eight is, what three men were arrested in the Dominican Republic? Remember, they got into the brawl. Teresa sprayed the, the champagne, pissed off the people, and three of them were ultimately arrested. Which three were they? Dun, dun, dun. I love your shirt. Thank you. Compliments won't win you a point, though. Chris, Joe, and Ellie. I feel like that was a typo, and you meant Chris, Joe, and Elby, so I'm going to give it to you, Sam Benjamin. Boom, and that puts Sam... At the top of the list, that is correct. It was Chris Manzo, Albie Manzo, and Joe Judice. Oh, I should have asked you to specify which Joe, but I think we know. Gorga, it was not Joe Gorga. Remember, Joe Gorga and Melissa pieced out. They're like, fuck that shit. Let them deal with it. It was Joe Judice. Funny thing is, Joe Judice, well, actually, we may need to, Joe Judice was brought in because of Teresa, because they're like, we heard that Joe. There was a Joe that was involved in this incident, and Teresa's like, my husband's name is Joe. And they're like, great, bring him in. Okay, question number nine. As of right now, Sam is in the lead with, by one point, and we have seven others or six others that also have one point. Question number nine. After Dina left the show for the second time, what show did she try to get cast on? After Dina left the show for the second time, what show did she try to get cast on? I even know people who are friends with the cast and I'm failing. Alicia. Yes, that is correct. L.A. Hale. L.A. Hale. Wow. This is a tight one. It is correct. The correct answer was Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. L.A. Hale got that one. As of right now, everybody has one point, with exception for Sam, who is in the lead with two points. Last question. Somebody's either going to tie with Sam or she's going to take it home. 
me not waiting for others to answer first. Alicia. <laughs> okay, final question. Ooh, this is a good one because it's not that easy, but it's a good one. Um, why does Teresa think that Danielle was fired for the second time? Why does Teresa think that Danielle was fired for the second time? Bebo, bebo, bet, bebo, bebo, bet, bebo, bebo, bet, point high he. Bebo, bebo, bet, bebo, bebo, bet, bebo, bebo, bet, boy my he. That's right, as told by tons. Oh my gosh. Tons. You've just caused a tie. We are now in a dead tie between Sam Benjamin and as told by tons, both. With two points. Love money party. Yes, the correct answer was loyalty. She wasn't loyal. She wasn't loyal. Um, okay. So now we need a bonus point. What was the full name of the salon the women were cast in originally? This is for tons and this is for Sam. What was the name of the salon that the women were originally cast in? Tiebreaker question. Are you ready? Come on, Sam. Come on, tons. Tina, you're not supposed to answer it. <laughs> Guys, you're not supposed to answer it. This is the tiebreaker. You're giving them the answer. As told by tons, got it correct. It is a Chateau Salon. So the, the winner is Chateau. Did we lose Sam? Sam disappeared. Well, the winner... Is as told by tons. And I don't think as told by tons actually has won yet. So congratulations to as told by tons. You are the winner tonight. DM me. I'm going to send you a tea spilling professional t-shirt or a Liddy City tank top. You choose. Liddy City tank top or tea spilling professional t-shirt. Let me know which one you would prefer. DM me as told by tons. Your size and your address. Well, actually, your preference of shirt, your size, and your address. Preference of shirt, size, and address. Sam, you were so close to winning this. Like, truly so close to winning this. Tons literally came in at the last minute and got that that last point. Oh, my God. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it, you guys. Thank you so much. If you're watching this on the YouTube, thanks for tuning in. So much fun. We will be doing another. We won't. We'll be doing two parts in the next in our next book club, we'll be breaking down parts five and six. Because, yeah, this was four. So we're going to do five and six. And five and six are Real Housewives of D.C. and Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So we won't have book club this upcoming week because it is Thanksgiving. But we will come back the following week with five parts five and six. And then we'll finish off with six with seven and eight. Those will be the final two parts. So next time we convene, next time we meet, you have two weeks. You have a week off for the holiday. Next time we meet, we're going to break down part five, which is Real Housewives of D.C., and part six, which is Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And then we'll conclude the following week with Real Housewives of Dallas and Real Housewives of Potomac, which are the final two parts. So we only have two weeks left of book club. We will be skipping book club this upcoming week because it is the week of Thanksgiving. And Thursday Night's Live will also be pushed Probably to Friday or Saturday. I'll probably post a poll so we determine which day we would rather have it because I know it is a holiday weekend and I still want to have fun with you guys. But we will be having regular episodes. I'll have a regular news breakdown that comes out on Monday and then I will have a special episode with Kimberly Archie that comes out on Wednesday. As we know, Kimberly Archie is a former client of Tom Girardi's and she's going to be spilling some major tea. We're taping it this week. This Wednesday, this week on the show, we have Emily D. Baker, who's doing a legal breakdown on the Jen Shaw case and on the Erica Girardi stuff, or at least an update on all the Erica Girardi stuff. So be sure to catch that if you haven't done so already. It comes out on Wednesday morning. Thank you guys so much for tuning into Book Club. This has been fun. If you haven't ordered your copy of Not All Diamonds and Rosé, DM me so I can send you that affiliate link and you can support the show. I really appreciate you guys. I love you guys. This has been so much fun. Yes, for those of you that are asking in the live chat, I will be doing Book Club. I will be doing Book Club. I will be doing Book Club. Or sorry, not Book Club. I will be doing After Party. We will do an After Party after this. Um, 
So pop on over to my personal account at Just Plain Zach if you want to join the after party. And as always, we go live every Tuesday nights, except for this upcoming Tuesday because it's the holiday week, holiday week, and I'm going to be out of town. But we usually go live every Tuesday nights at 6.30 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 Eastern for Bravo Book Club. Since we are coming to the end of Not All Diamonds and Rosé, we're going to have to start thinking about what our next book is going to be. I'm kind of thinking I want to read House of Hilton. House of Hilton sounds really juicy. That sounds like a fun time because it's about the Hilton family. But all right, guys, love you, mean it. I will talk to you. Book Club will reconvene later, but I will talk to you this Thursday. We go live at 6.30 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 Eastern. Um, If you haven't done so yet, I've been getting slammed by some trolls lately, and I've gotten a lot of one-star reviews on the podcast in the past week. The trolls just really seem to be out. I've been taking a lot of hits from a lot of angles, so if you want to show me some love, and you want to show some love on iTunes, please leave me a five-star review. I really appreciate it. I love you guys so much. I'm going to head over to After Party where we're going to have some good time and we're going to get Lady City. Thanks, guys. Love you guys. Mean it. Bye.